Hi everyone, welcome to the module 15 of our Verilog HDL crash course and in this module we are going to cover Verilog compiler directives. So before I start this video, just a small request, if you are visiting to this channel first time or if you have not subscribed this channel so far, I would request you to please do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload a new video. So now let's get started. So compiler directives are nothing but some kind of statements that causes the compiler to take a specific action during compilation. So when we write a RTL HDL code and when we compile that then if there are any specific compiler directives we have included in our RTL file the very low compiler is going to take some specific action pertaining to those compiler directives. So just one another important point here is compiler directive executes before the real compilation stage happens and the stage which happens before the compilation in any kind of compiler is nothing but pre-processing. So compiler directive executes during the pre-processing stage of the compilation. So just remember this point and there are few important compiler directives which we are going to cover in this particular module and those are time scale, macro definitions and include directives. So first of all let's understand the time scale compiler directives. So time scale compiler directives specifies the time unit and the time precision. It is basically used to specify two things one is what is the time unit for the compilation and the second one is what is the time precision and time precision is nothing but it specifies how the delay values are going to be rounded off during simulation and the time precision also specifies what is the minimum or the smallest delay which the simulator can accept so let's understand these two terms time unit and time precision in more details. So for example if we define a time unit of 10 nanosecond. So if we define the time unit as 10 nanosecond then how this time unit is going to affect the simulation. So if now in simulation and suppose in our test bench we are defining a delay something like this has 2.3 then what is the meaning of this. So here the time unit is defined as 10 nanosecond and in the test bench we are writing a delay with has 2.3. So now let's see how the simulator will treat this value. So if the time unit is 10 nanosecond and we define a delay of 2.3 then the simulator will calculate the real delay and the real delay here is going to be 2.3 into the time unit which is 10. So basically 23 nanosecond. So the simulator will delay the execution of further statements for 23 nanosecond. So for example we have a time scale or a time unit defined as 1 nanosecond and if the time unit is defined as 1 nanosecond then the meaning of hash 2.3 will be nothing but 2.3 nanosecond itself. So this is how the simulator calculates the real delay value using the delay specified in the test bench and what is the time unit specified. Now the valid time units can be in seconds, in milliseconds, in microseconds, in nanoseconds, in picoseconds or in fermiseconds. And the valid integer values which are used to specify time units or precision can be only one 10, 100, 1000 like this. And the time scale compiler directive is also used by another system task like dollar display to get the time at a particular instance and to print its value. Now let's see the syntax of time scale compiler directives. So the time scale compiler directive is defined as tick time scale and then the time unit and the precision value. For example, we have a time scale 1 nanosecond by 1 picosecond. So the meaning of this is 
the time unit here is going to be one nanosecond and the precision so the precision means here nothing but the rounded value or the smallest delay which can be accepted by the simulator so the precision here is going to be 1 by 100 nanosecond and the another example here is 1 nanosecond by 100 picosecond so the time unit here is going to be 1 nanosecond and the precision here is going to be 0 0.1 nanosecond now let's see few more examples and let's understand the precision value in more details so here we have one example of time scale 100 picosecond by 10 picosecond so here if we define a delay of one unit in our simulation the delay of one unit is going to be nothing but 100 picosecond because our time unit is 100 picosecond so whatever the delay value we are going to define during the simulation that will basically get multiplied by the time unit value and what is the smallest delay which our simulator can accept so the smallest delay which our simulator can accept is going to be 10 picosecond which is going to be 0 0.0 sorry it would be 0 0.01 nanosecond as the smallest delay that is 10 picosecond so basically during the simulation we can we can give a delay of 0 0.01 which the simulator can accept but the simulator will not accept a delay which is smaller than 0 0.01 that for example let's say 0 0.001 the delay of 0001 the simulator is not going to accept this delay. now let's see one another example so here we have time scale 1 nanosecond by 1 picosecond so here the one the delay of one unit is going to be equal to 1 nanosecond and the precision here is going to be 0 0.001 nanosecond as the smallest delay and let's see the next example here which we have 10 picosecond by 1 fermi second so a delay of one unit is going to be 10 picosecond here and the smallest measurable delay would be 0 0.001 picosecond now let's see how the values are rounded off by using the precision so if you see here we have a time scale of 1 nanosecond by 1 nanosecond that means the time unit is 1 nanosecond and the precision is also 1 nanosecond now let's see how the delay values will be rounded off so if we have a delay unit specified as has 0 0.49 which is less than half a time unit right so now the precision here is defined as or specified as 1 nanosecond and hence the simulator cannot go smaller than 1 nanosecond that means it cannot delay the execution of next statements because it is not going to accept any kind of delays in the simulation which are less than 1 nanosecond so now the round off concept will come here so here if our delay is specified as 0 0.49 which is half of our time unit and the precision is also 1 nanosecond that means now this value is going to be rounded off it will rounded off to a 0 value that means this value is not going to affect the execution of the statements which are written after this delay but if this delay is specified as 0 0.51 now it will basically get rounded to the upper value which is 1 nanosecond and the 1 nanosecond since the precision is also 1 nanosecond so the simulator now is going to accept this 1 nanosecond value and it is going to delay the execution of the next statements which are coming after this delay by one nanosecond so i hope the concept of time unit and precision which are part of time scale compiler directive are very much clear to you now let's understand the next compiler directive which is macro so a macro is an identifier that represents a string of text and macros are defined with the directive tick define and are invoked with the quoted macro name as shown in the example below so here if you see we have defined a macro tick define and the value the n is the macro name and the value is 8 so how we are going to invoke this we are going to invoke this like tick and then the macro name so this is the way of invoking a macro and basically velo compilers will substitute the string for the macro name before starting compilation so what they will do is 
the value of this macro the compiler will basically substitute the value of this macro which is 8 at this place where it is basically getting invoked so this is done before the real compilation starts so if you see there are many steps involved during the compilation so the first step is pre-processing then the compilation then assembly then linking and so on so before the compilation starts the compiler is basically going to be in the pre-processing stage and in pre-processing stage it will basically going to execute all kind of compiler directives which are there in the design and the tick define statement must appear in the file before the statement using the string so the compiler directive or basically the tick define compiler directive should come before we are going to make use of that compiler directive in our file if they are separate files so for example if we have defined a macro in a separate file and we are going to use it in one another file so basically we need to compile the file which has the real macro defined first and then we are going to compile the file which is going to use that particular macro so now let's see the syntax of macro so we have to use the tick define then macro name and then the value here here is the macro name first and then the value and then we are going to call that macro by using a tick and the macro name so if you see here we have an example here tick define add lsb and the value for this macro is nothing but a7 down to 0 plus b7 down to 0 and then we have one another macro defined which is n equal to 8 or basically the value of this macro n is going to be 8 now let's see how we can make use of these macros so we are defining a wire variable here and in that wire instead of defining a value explicitly we are going to use the macro name here or we, we are basically going to invoke the macro here and here if you see assign s equal to tick add underscore lsb that means whatever the value of this macro is that will get substitute here so if you see this is nothing but assign s equal to a7 down to 0 plus b7 down to so this is how we can make use of macro compiler directives in our video SDL. Now let's see the next compiler directive which is also very important and it is include directive. So include is basically used to include the contents of a text file at the point in the current file where the include directive is. So in the current file where we are basically going to use the include directive it will based all the contents of that particular file in the current position so the include directive is basically similar to the c or c++ include directive the syntax is tick include and the file name and how it works let's see one example here here we have module x and here we are going to include one another file so basically all the contents from this file is going to be pasted after this module x so this is how the include directive so I hope the different compiler directives covered in this module are clear. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you very much.